Hey, look who just got shipped via Space Bridge, but man, those Energon fees were outrageous. Here's your look at the new Super 7 Transformers Ultimates Megatron. Peace through tyranny booms Megatron's voice as the undisputed villain of the Transformers universe. His rule is for good reason. Between his tremendous strength, military acumen, and terror-inspiring ruthless aggression, he has many finer qualities that make him reign supreme over the Decepticons. This 8-inch highly articulated Transformers Ultimates figure of Megatron features Generation 1 accurate paint deco and interchangeable heads and hands. With an arsenal of other accessories, this figure is every bit as well-equipped as you'd expect expect the leader of the fearsome Decepticons to be. Adding this Megatron Ultimates figure to your collection is as inevitable as the fear he instills in his foes. Despite the wishes of Starscream, Megatron exists now as a Super 7 Ultimates figure. And of course, while we are going ahead and measuring this off, I did actually find this one over on Entertainment Earth. I'll provide the link down below if you guys have been collecting any of the Super 7 Transformer Ultimate figures and haven't had a chance to get the leader of the Decepticons yet. You can click the link down below. The link will also as well save you 10% on anything you see on their site for, for it that's in, currently in stock. So you can save a little bit of money in the process. If I was to say measure off to the very top, not of Megatron's head, but rather the barrel behind him, that's the highest point of the figure of all, after all, the figure is going to stand about 8 inches in height, or he's going to be about 20 centimeters tall. That would be a fun comparison. I would bring in other bad guys that Super 7 have made that are all part of the evil bad guys alumni. Here's what Megatron looks like with the G.I. Joe's Cobra Commander, and here's as well what Megatron looks like with the Thundercats Mumra the Ever-Living. Obviously, Megatron is going to be a lot taller than Cobra Commander, but he's actually not that much different in size than Mumra, and Mumra was a pretty big figure to start with. Megatron does mark, in fact, the first Transformers Ultimates figure I picked up, having already passed on Prime. There was something about Prime that just sort of seemed underwhelming to me, but having now the leader of the Decepticons, I would feel, I'd feel a bit out of place on my collection shelf if I didn't have then the leader of the Autobots, so I might try to still track down the Prime, and if I do, of course, track down Optimus Prime, I'll do a follow-up review, showing, of course, that figure in his standalone review and I'll bring back in Megs. Megatron, though, does come include with quite a lot of accessories. And I will say, though, to the credit of Megatron, unlike Prime, that sort of had weird things get packed along with him, what like a surfboard and a basketball. Fine and good, but I'm glad to see that Megatron kind of gets a little more cooler accessories. The starting first with smallest of the accessories, the figure comes include with the Pearl of Bahudin. The Pearl, I think, is a sphere which contains the power core of the Cybertronian weather controlling machine. It's, I think, a one standalone episode reference, but a reference that was, I guess, pertinent enough for Super 7 to decide to release a smaller version of this can be displayed along with Megatron. I suppose he does have a hand to hold the Pearl of Bahudin. Doesn't sort of doesn't necessarily clip into his hand it's sort of more as a case that's just resting on his on his palm instead i mean again it's again for one and ep one episode reference alone only I, I guess it's nice to see that they included it i probably would have maybe used the plastic for something else instead but again you get the pearl of bahudin we're going to put that to the side the figure as well comes include a tiny little crimson since the days, it seems, of Transformers Masterpiece figures, Crimzeek has always seemed to go in tow with Megatron, and we get a small little representation of Crimzeek here with Megatron. It's all been cast here in more of a translucent orange plastic, but you can see detailed on the front is both the eyes, and it's more of a jack-o'-lantern mouth. Really like the look of Crimzeek. I don't know if I really will be displaying him with Crimzeek. I suppose, if anything, you probably could just have this resting on Megatron's shoulders, as he does have at least flat feet. You can either display him there, or of course, he stands perfectly fine, really flat on his own. Move him out of the way as well. The figure as well comes in clue with a chemical flask. The flask itself is translucent in clear plastic. You can see there's a purple liquid down below here. For one reason or another, there's a little band across the top of it. I'm not really sure whether that's specific to the way it was in an episode. I think it was referencing to an episode that they would have included the flask. 
but there's like a little kind of a coarser texturing that they put around it. Maybe it may have something to do with the fact it's a little bit easier for Megatron to be able to hold the flask. I mean, the hands themselves are pretty soft enough in plastic. They can even then just even wedge the flask above to the top. And he, I mean, he holds it fine. I don't know necessarily why that had to little be that little extra coarse bit on it. But again, it could have a reference to more of the episode. Move that to the side. And then the figure also as well comes included with things more reference to the 80s movie. First of all, he gets himself the blaster. But I guess in the proper order, he gets thrown first against the wall and grabs himself this laser sword. The laser then projects a beam out in red. And then I think Megatron proceeds to slash the side of Optimus Prime's body. And then even adding more further insult to injury, he then takes himself the blaster. Before, of course, we're doing that. The detail on this is nice. The hilt, as you can see, does have spikes sticking out the sides. Cast here in purple plastic with a lighter version of purple on the inside of the hilt. And, of course, you got yourself the, the projected beam here in a soft, translucent red. Like, like the look of that one. But, again, he also comes included as well with the blaster. This is while he's holding Hot Rod, and he's telling Optimus Prime to fall and continues to shoot. Again, further insult to injury, I think he continues to shoot the side of Optimus Prime's body until Megatron, Megatron succeeds, and Optimus Prime does in fact fall. Cast again in that same purple plastic, the same lighter violet purple has also been added here as well. A nice little accompanying piece, the Megatron. Strange that some of the other things that the figure comes in clue, I guess not so strange, is the fact that the figure comes in clue with a mace. Like with Optimus Prime always coming in clue with this Energon axe, now Megatron always seems relegated to his energy ball and chain. The chain itself, this version of it at least, is softer plastic, but it doesn't have any bend to it. I guess if you wanted to, you probably could heat this in hot water and then just bend it to the desired look that you want and then cool it if you wanted to have it more in a curved position. If you wanted something, though, a little looser, then he's also got one that actually has connecting chains. Individually linked, you can see that this one does actually have more of a weighted feel to it. And if, if you wanted to have this more displayed with the figure and just sort of draped along the side of his body, then this one would fit the bill a little bit better. The balls are about the same. Careful, careful where your mind is. The balls are about the same. You can see the spikes are again about the same and cast still the same in like a translucent kind of reddish uh, pink plastic. Again, there's two different versions of that. Either one of these, by the way, can be swapped out with Megatron's existing hands. Just a case though of just removing the hands from the forearms. And then take yourself the mace that you want to use, the ball and chain, which is going to attach that in place. And again, there's the looser dropped one that has the individual links. Again, rests nicely against the floor of Megatron's feet. Uh, while Megatron is actually, you know what, I'm going to just only move these aside anyways. We'll probably bring those back, I think, for final looks. I'm going to put Megatron's hand back in place right now. He also, as well, comes with some swappable hands, but I guess just before we actually do that, the figure, as well, comes included with an Energon cube that looks like Megatron has been drinking out of it. It's partially filled, an ideal real candidate to be included with, say, a future sound wave. I really like the idea that it actually looks like it's liquid. It's not real liquid. I wouldn't be able to tilt it back and forth or anything like that, but it's also permanently attached to his hand, so there's really no way to remove that. Uh, he does also technically come included with a mouth that looks like he has already been drinking maybe a little too much of the Energon drink. You can see like they've added these additional little pink marks down the side. It actually kind of looks like he's a vampire. I like the head sculpt. I don't know how much I really love the idea that they've added the pink to the sides. I'm wondering if I can actually take myself a little bit of rubbing alcohol of a, a more diluted amount and maybe see if I can actually go in there and remove these. Now, they don't necessarily look like they're sculpted onto his face, but I would really like to remove them because I think I really like this head sculpt with a smile on his face instead of more the neutral expression that he has currently on his neck. If you, though, prefer, Megatron also comes included with this head sculpt as well, which has the mind control helmet. This mind control helmet is one that really reminds me of a birthday party I went to a long time ago where my friend had rented Transformers on VHS. I think even back then, maybe it was Beta. No, no, he was privileged. He had VHS. And it actually was the episode, I think it was a two-part episode, in fact, where Megatron has a mind-controlling helmet. Nicely sculpted. It's actually not that far different, really, than this one right here. I would love if this could have been something that was removable, which I would just done away with the helmet and maybe just had the figure displayed with more of the smiling face. But again, like it looks to be the same case that they are using the maybe the same head. Like this one looks like it's a little bit shorter of a chin. Okay, maybe it's not the exact same head sculpt, but there's that option available as well if you wanted to. And then, of course, wrapping up the remaining things that come in clue with Megatron, he comes with some swappable hands. More hands for holding, like, for example, 
like for example, the pearl, if you wanted to have him displayed with that, he has those hands. You could probably in a way use these as well for like just regular expression hands without having to really commit to any idea of having the figure holding something. But if you did want to have him holding things, then the figure also comes include some gripping hands as well. Equally well sculpted and cast here in a more darker gunmetal gray. Again, we've already seen how well it is to swap out the hands. Again, you just simply just pop the hand and remove them from the forearm. And then you go ahead and just replace the hand that you want to then use. The hands, by the way, do have a swivel back and forth as well. So there's a little bit of posability at play here. And again, like if you want to take yourself, for example, the blaster, the blaster then just fits into his hand and he can start blasting away at Optimus Prime. The blaster itself, again, fits fairly well. You just kind of have to get it around his hand, for example. And then, like I said, Megatron can then have the hand displayed with the blaster. You may have already noticed the fact that he does also have his cannon. That is something that is removable. It attaches via the rectangular peg that's provided on the bottom of it. If you look to the side of the figure, he actually does have just a shaped peg that matches the same, and you just attach the two together. The thing obviously already be stated is the fact that it does add a lot of weight to Megatron's arms. Let's just go ahead and take this out of his hand for right now. It does add some weight to Megatron's arms. So like if, for example, you wanted to, I just dropped the cannon. Let's, I'm going to have to go and retrieve that in a second. Can I, can I reach it? Can I reach it? Hold on one second. As I was saying, though, if you do take yourself the cannon and attach it onto the top of his forearm, it does add a lot of weight to Megatron's arms. It may, may not be the case where you will always be able to hold this in this pose, because I've already noticed with a few little hours that have actually had this figure out of his packaging, that his arm is already loose. His arm is loose and his legs are loose. So again, I don't know the longevity of having him always in this pose, unless you found a way to go in there and tighten up the joints, maybe a little bit of floor polish, for example. But he does have the means, again, to have his cannon attached onto the end of his arm. And again, if you guys wanted to see as well what his head sculpt looked like, because we will be changing at the head in a moment. Again, you get a more stoic look for Megatron, which fits fits the, the part fine for Megatron. But honestly, though, I really like this head sculpt, I think, a little bit more with just the more smiling face. The top of the head, really from like the nose up, looks to be exactly the same. It really, again, is the expression in the mouth that varies the one head sculpt from the other. If only, though, I could go in there and add a little bit of something to remove, again, that paint. Because I really, again, would love to have the figure displayed with this head sculpt instead of this one here. Changing out the heads is just a case of popping off the head that's already there. Might help maybe just easier to remove the head, put the head down here for a second. Let's just pop the head right off the ball peg and then replace it with then the smiling face. Maybe you can kind of see what I mean. It does add a little more personality, some could certainly say. Again, I just, I don't know if I like really the fact it does have, I mean, it's fine and good if you wanted to have the figure displayed, say, with the Energon Cube, but if you don't decide to have the figure displayed with the Energon Cube, I think it just draws more attention to the fact that something seems off with Megatron's face. You see if I can maybe remove that. One also feature I did want to mention as well with Megatron is he does have a hidden feature, not necessarily a case where he's storing a matrix of leadership, but rather though, you can actually open this up as well. And inside he has the antimatter anti chest. It's just a case that they've added some sort of translucent or chromium sort of stickers on the inside. It kind of gives them sort of windshields on the front of a truck, say, for, for Optimus Prime. The only unfortunate thing by doing this and adding this is this never really stays properly in place. It doesn't necessarily tab in place. I kind of wish that there were like pegs on the insides of it and maybe, say, matching holes on the on the tops of it where this could properly snap in place. But I always, I always feel like even as I'm moving the figure, I always find myself accidentally pulling down the panel on the front of his chest. It does have, of course, the Decepticon logo featured very predominantly on the, on the chest. He is the leader, after all. The other thing I will say, though, about the figure is the stature and size of him. He seems a little off-proportioned. This is fine. I like the way that they did the top of the torso here. But sort of like this section right here, I feel like his abdomen isn't wide enough or isn't long enough. It does have at least a smart use as they've incorporated some additional torso crunch. You can actually crunch and move the torso up and down. It also does rotate there also as well. But the sacrifice it has to unfortunately make is that I feel like this part isn't long enough. It just would be a little bit longer, I feel in my eyes at least. But the detailing and the color scheme for Megatron matches that, of course, to what he would have had in the original cartoon. I'm going to spin this around so you can see it on the back. There's the cannon piece, of course, that's on the back of the figure's body. Not removable, so don't try to force this off or anything like that. The colors of the red are nicely done. I did want to say, though, when it came to the pegs, his arms were really tight. His shoulders weren't necessarily the case, but his elbows were something I had to heat with hot water. I just submerged a little bit in hot water, just enough to soften up the joints. I don't know if there was just a paint buildup at all, a little bit in there, but eventually I was able to bend the elbows. If there is a little bit of resistance, don't force it for the rest that there's potentially a breakage that may happen to that joint. 
But all in all, though, again, like head to toe, again, he's got those big clunky boots on, on the bottom there as well, his big large robo, robo feet. On the back, it doesn't seem like it's painted. I'd have to go back and look at the cartoon again, and I think they're in some of the cartoon episodes. Of course, paint would always be changing in those original earlier Generation 1 cartoons. I think in most of the episodes, though, he tends to have lighter pink on the back of his boots or the back of his robot feet. For the articulation on Megatron here, now it's going to be a little more limited, but it goes sort of with the territory of a figure being a robotic body. Head rotates all the way around. It does move down and it does move up. Now, one thing I have done with this Megatron that I didn't do with the original Megatron was I, I moved his head a little higher up. You'll notice when you have this guy out of the packaging first that the head is sitting really low down. If you bring it a little bit higher up, it does give you a little more range than what it would if you have it pushed all the way down. So you may want to just give a little bit of clearance. It does result, though, in Megatron's head being a little on the more looser side. But again, you can get a little bit more range that you wouldn't be able to get normally. Again, you can move it up and down and... Again, if you pushed it all the way down, which I'm not going to do right now, it is going to have more of the chin closer to the top of his torso. Speaking of his torso, though, the torso does swivel back and forth. I mean, full rotation really in the waist. And then he has, again, that forward crunch where he can move it for further back, further forward, I should say. Uh, it doesn't move any further back, though. So, I mean, really, that's the stock. That's the default right there. It's only just moving it forward. Arms rotate all the way around. Uh, that you can also as well move them out at almost 90 degrees. The figure does have a swivel in his hands, or swivel in his forms, I should say, and also a bend that's not quite 90 degrees, but still pretty close. Hands that I'm using right now will allow the hand to rotate all the way around. You can also hinge those back and forth as well. And then when it comes to his legs, the legs do split. Now, he has skirting on the sides, so you're only going to be able to split that far when it comes to Meg's legs. Meg's legs. You can bring those legs forward only that far. You can only bring them back only that far. He does have only just a single hinge on his knee. No really rotation on the lower leg. And then when it comes to his boots, for obvious reasons, because he has the siding, side sculpting here, you can bring him back and forth this way. But there isn't no real means to rotate this back and forth on the ankles. So if you want to get a little more of a dynamic pose for Megatron, you really can't turn the ankles as much as really what you would have liked. Still, though, it's a nice looking Megatron. Uh, I think I will do some customization if I can. Maybe take myself a little bit of diluted, uh, ru like rubbing alcohol, for example, and see if I can maybe find a way to remove that pink that's on the side of his mouth. Ideally, though, it's still suitable for if you want to figure the display, for example, with the Energon Cube. I like the idea of the Energon Cube. I don't know, though, if I like the idea of having that, though, on the side of his mouth. So I'm going to see if I can probably take that off. And one last look of the bad guys, again, because we've been looking at a whole bunch of bad guys, whether you like the Thundercats, you like the G.I. Joes, and now, of course, Transformers. This might be also one of those cases, too. Like, there's collectors that may not collect an entire line of something, but they like, for example, all the 80s villains. So, like, you might just be picking up Megatron, for example, to be displayed on the shelf with, say, Cobra Commander from G.I. Joe or Cobra, and, say, Mumra the Ever-Living from Thundercats. Still, though, Megatron turned out to be pretty good. Still enough compelling argument, I would say, for me to go back then and try to track down Optimus Prime. At least then I could have the two displayed on the shelf. Outside of the leader of the Decepticons, I'm not sure how dedicated the person behind the camera is going to be to collecting anything that's Transformers Ultimate related. Now, I've been quite loyal to all the other things that Super 7 has been doing with the Silverhawks, the Simpsons, G.I. Joe, Ren and Stimpy, and even Thundercats. I mean, you can only go so far when it comes to a collection shelf. With Transformers, they're a little bit different because, of course, it cuts deep differently to collectors. There's, of course, the fans out there that are loving the Generation 1 cartoon designs, like myself, for example. So, like, I'll be more interested, say, for example, to get Megatron and Grimlock. A Grimlock figure, by the way, was part of this wave. I haven't yet picked up Grimlock, but I'm hoping to get him soon. And for that reason, I probably would then still go back and pick up the original Optimus Prime. But they have also referenced in there the original toys. They've also referenced in there also as well media that's outside the realm of the original North American cartoon from the 80s. Those aren't figures necessarily I could see myself really picking up because, again, you only have so much shelf space to work with. Optimus Prime was one I was sort of on the fence about because while I did like kind of like the look of the character, I wasn't really sure I liked the idea that the figure came included with, like, what, a surfboard? A basketball? Could I ever see myself really displaying the leader of the Autobots with either one of those? Not likely. Megatron, on the other hand, those are a lot of worthy candidates for things that the figure could be displayed with in his hands. I've got right now, for final looks, the Energon Cube in his one hand. Krim Zeke is sitting on, resting nicely on his shoulder. And obviously, if I had the figure displayed with the Energon Cube partially drank, then I've had also as well the drank-looked face that's going to have the trickling Energon down the corners of his mouth. It's one thing I don't really like about the head sculpt. I think it's a better of the, of the three heads at least we get. And even though I have no plans to ever really no desired interest really to display Megatron with the mind-controlling helmet, I at least give the virtual heads up 
hats off to Super 7 for including accessories like that. For me, at least, I'm going to see if I can take a little bit of diluted rubbing alcohol, maybe not of a stronger strength, and see if I can find a way to take the little lines off the sides of his mouth. Because I really actually like the more smiling look to Megatron than the more stoic look that he came originally packaged with. Have you had the chance to get Megatron for yourself? Let me know down below in the comment section. And if you have, how do you have the figure displayed? Let me know. Also, as well, if you guys haven't had any luck to find Megatron in the wild, I did actually grab this one over on Entertainment Earth. He's there as well as the rest of the wave. I don't know if the earliest wave, the wave that just preceded this one, actually is still there as well. But again, if you guys are interested in anything that's in stock, using the link that's provided down below in the video description, not only will take you directly to Meg's, but also as well, that link will give you 10% on anything that you're adding that's in stock currently into your shopping cart. So in other words, if you want to buy Megatron for yourself or you want to buy something else using that link, 10% will come off right away when you go to your shopping cart. Of course, do a little bit of shopping, picking up either Transformers or the other fun stuff that Super 7 has been releasing in the previous waves. Uh, again, like if you guys enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you certainly want to stick around for more Super 7, if you haven't already done so, please and thank you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on as well the bell notification. Of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.